Hello there or hi. My name is Emmanuel Nyabongo Alinda. In my first language, Lunyoro, my name Nyabongo, or the name Nyabongo actually means somebody who's both brilliantly multi-talented and a genius in each of those individual talents they possess. And then the name Alinda actually refers to somebody who's either protecting or guarding something, somebody somewhere or a, either a protector or guard. And then Emmanuel, of course, is a Christian name that actually means uh, the Almighty God is with us. I'm a broadcaster with a bachelor's degree in journalism and communication that I obtained from the Uganda Pentecostal University. Never mind my accent, cause I'm just about tells you why I speak with native user accents. Before that, I should let you know that the dictionary I use has four meanings of the word accent. And the first meaning explains accent as being a way of pronouncing the words of a language that shows which country, area or social class a person comes from. Now, I come from a social class of users of English as a second language who've taken an extra step to learn about spoken English and how spoken English differs from written English. You might think that I ain't proud of who I am or my origin. However, I'm proud of being Munyoro. Lunyoro is my first language and my pet name is Akiki. Now, here are a few reasons as to why I use native accents. The first reason for my use of native accents is due to the fact that I'm in a profession where we're expected to play multiple communication roles like educating, entertaining, informing and more of them all at the same time. Focusing on the role of educating, as a broadcaster I'm expected to be the source of the right speech patterns, spellings and anything else to do with the right things or correctness. The broadcaster should play each of these communication roles either directly or indirectly. Besides, broadcasters are the eyes, ears and voice of the audience and Broadcasters are expected to pronounce the words of any language in the same way a native user of that language would say their words. For example, if I were born in the United States of America or were an American and were presenting in Lunyoro, I'm not allowed to, you know, speak Lunyoro with an American accent because I want to be myself or show people where... No. In broadcasting, if you are presenting in Lunyoro, you should speak Lunyoro like a native Munyoro. And still, if I were a Munyoro like my myself and we're presenting uh, at an English station or in English I have an obligation to present in um, you know real native speaker English and not present with a Kinyoro accent oh, well I'm not aware of uh, the English accent for the Nyoro but uh, like journalists or any other mass communicators broadcasters are expected to be the eyes and voices of the audience I said this already and some other broadcast ethical codes of conduct also demand that broadcasters be accurate and lingually prepared. Reason two of my top four reasons is because I've learned how to interpret symbols of spoken English. This makes it easy for me to show the aural difference between words like LAN and LEARN, first and fast plus others. LAN is spelled as L-A-N. All in capitals and actually LAN stands for local area network. Then learn is spelled as L E A R N. Learn is all about either getting to know something or acquiring knowledge. Thirst is spelled F I R S T. Thirst is all about coming before another or what comes before the other. Then the spelling of fast is F. A S T and fast is all about speed. These differences between words in pronunciation, spelling and meaning also exists in your own language. Hello there. I'm Emmanuel Nyawongo Alinda. In my first language, Runyorov. My name Nyawongo actually means somebody who's both brilliantly multi-talented and a genius. 
in everything they do or every one of those individual activities or talents they have. The name Alinda means either guarding or protecting something. And of course, Emmanuel means the Almighty God is with us. I am a broadcaster by profession and I got a bachelor's degree in journalism and communication that I obtained from the Uganda Pentecostal University. What you just been watching me read a short while ago is actually a personal copy of my university research dissertation or what you could call research proposal. It was all about the role of radio in the promotion of HIV AIDS awareness in Uganda, a case study of Fort Porto municipality, Kabarole district. Basically it was all about the role of the mass media in promoting anything. And you know radio, uh, radio TV, newspapers, magazines, the internet are all considered mass media. Never mind the way I speak or what you call my accent. Uh, yet I'm not a native speaker of the English language. Uh, one important thing I'd like you to know is that there are many reasons as to why I speak like this even when I'm not a native user of the English language. And the most important thing you should know is that the kind of dictionary that I use actually has four meanings of the word accent. Now the first meaning explains accent as being a way of pronouncing the words of a language that shows which country, area or social group you belong to or you come from now. I belong to the social group of uh, users of English as a second language who've taken an extra step to learn about spoken English and how spoken English differs from written English. Now, in places uh, where English is taught as a second language, people are rarely taught how to speak the language. We were mostly taught how to read and write. It's on rare occasions or uh, when uh, you are doing something like mass communication, journalism and communication, linguistics or English language, when you'll be introduced to how to speak the language. Now, when we are being taught how to speak English language, we are introduced to things like uh, the artistic elements of speech, and that includes pronunciation, articulation, intonation, and accent. Now, in pronunciation alone, uh, those of us who've learned how uh, to speak the language are taught how to interpret symbols of spoken English. And among these symbols, we have the IPA, which is the International Phonetic Alphabet which is the easiest and is one I'm most conversant with at the moment. We have where service phonetics are second easiest and then the most challenging or difficult for other people are the diacritics or diacritical marks. Uh, diacritical marks are mostly found in uh, the American Heritage Dictionary. Uh, those of us who use Oxford Advanced Learners, the uh, Oxford Dictionaries generally, I use Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary, uh, it uses IPA symbols or the International Phonetic Alphabet symbols. And then where service phonetics are uh, just um, haven't read anywhere or uh, been taught, uh, learned of any book that uses where service phonetics. They are, I think, used, say, if you're sending news uh, or anything, uh, they can uh, substitute their critics and uh, IPA symbols. You know, I personally haven't come across a computer keyboard or typewriter that has these uh, IPA and their critics symbols. So in place of those, when you are typing something or you want to send something over a distance to somebody to pronounce well, you use the wire service phonetics. But anyway, that's a lot of detail. We'll get to that at some other time. You might think that I ain't proud of who I am or my origin. However, I'm proud of being Munyoro. Runyoro is my first language and my pet name is Akiki. Once again, we can keep in touch for advert placement, promotions, publicity, commercials, name it, anything you want millions to know or billions of people to know, just call me 0751959697 or 0701959698. Alternatively, if you are anywhere outside the Pearl of Africa, then dial plus 256-751-959697. Call me. Or you can call plus 256-701-959698. With that, I look forward to hearing from you or even physically shaking your hand. Bye for now. See you then. Keep in touch. Thank you very much for your time.
Because of the English language's oral liberty and especially with my profession where creativity is key, I sometimes may intend to pronounce certain words in a way that is different from dictionary pronunciations. I do this with the aim of executing a personal independent performance while letting certain words be different from others. Uh, besides, one of the broadcast ethical codes of conduct demands that broadcasters develop a personal independent performance. This is one way of uh, displaying originality or creativity. Back to my own style of delivery. The dictionary I use gives the words wood spelled as W, W, O, D and world that is spelled as W, O, U, L, D the same pronunciation wood. Now, for the sake of trying to be creative, I sometimes pronounce W-O-U-L-D as wooled, so as to slightly bring out the later L in wood. Meanwhile, I prefer leaving the pronunciation of wood to this word that is spelled as W-O-O-D. Others of my own are should, shouldn't, could, couldn't, would, wouldn't, and a lot more that I can't mention within this limited time. Reason number three. I think that any language we choose to learn is meant to be learned to native user level. No surprise that with some foreign languages, one's never considered as speaking those languages unless one bothers to pronounce words like native users of those languages. And this is why teachers of some foreign languages both teach and examine oral usage. And for in places uh, where English is learned as a second language, spoken English may be taught at tertiary level of education, depending on one's colors. As for now, it's mostly university students of journalism, mass communication and English language, and maybe linguistics who are introduced to spoken English. Again, those who use English as a second language have the liberty to pronounce English words in any way they like. This is what makes me think of English as an orally libertarian language. Unfortunately, the English language's oral liberty has led to a serious misunderstanding that all users of English as a second language must pronounce English words with their first language's accent. Now, amongst all of the English language books I've read, there's no such rule or instruction like one must or even should speak English with their first language's accent. Instead, the recommendation is that in order that one executes accurate oral communication, it's important for those who use English as a second language to pronounce English words like those who use English as their first language. Knowledge of the spoken form of any word is of great importance and this is why many English language dictionaries show word pronunciations immediately after word spellings even before explaining word meanings. Reason number four of my top four reasons for using accents could be the same as one of those reasons why some Ugandans speak other local Ugandan languages as if those foreign local languages are their first languages. It's like a non-Munyoro who wishes to deal with juices of Lunyoro and then successfully learns Lunyoro even up to native Munyoro usage level. Anything wrong with that? So, how come you probably haven't accused them of not being themselves? I think you should, like others, for either speaking or trying to use correct English. Nobody's a mistake and never will there ever be anyone who's made up of mistakes. Instead, we are and will always be perfect humans. So, don't rely on those lingual errors one may make as a way of telling whether these persons themselves are or not. Without including show business or showbiz people, I think there would be a problem only when someone doesn't use either their cultural names, dumps their first language, or even if one shies away from both their culture and language. If you need proof or more on what I've just been talking about, try out good books like TV and radio announcing by Hyde spelt as H-Y-D-E plus English language books like any 2000 and above edition of the English language encyclopedia, English dictionaries and some other relevant books. I'm also available for either broadcast consultation, employment or both. 
please call 0751 My email address is nae in small letters than 1981 in figures at gmail.com.